Hello, 502nd Air Base Wing. General Lennerman and Chief Lantang here at historic Fort Sam Houston. Uh, we're here at the end of our command tour and uh, we wanted to say thank you to all of you. Uh, with COVID and the events that have happened over the last few months, it's been a little bit difficult to get out and see all of you, uh, so we decided we would do it via video. Uh, so we're here today uh, at the end of our tour, reflecting on the beginning of our tour, and one of the things that we talked about early on was uh, creating a culture of connectedness across the wing. Uh, so I want to take an opportunity to ask the boss uh, now, uh, why was connectedness such an important thing for you and such an important uh, way that you wanted to get after us in our command tour? Well, you know, one of the reasons, one, the, the main reason I joined the Air Force uh, was for that feeling of family and that sense of being part of something bigger than ourselves. And I think anytime I've gone into a, an organization, um, I spend a lot of time trying to get to know the people that are going to be my new family and I'm going to be spending a ton of time with them. And so uh, coming to Joint Base San Antonio, it's it's a little bit harder because of the way we're organized and we're uh, geographically separated and there's so many of us. Uh, so you and I sat down and we kind of strategized about what what opportunities do we have to deliberately connect with folks and um, we went about uh, setting up lunches with our team. We did out and abouts with the squadrons. Uh, we had quarterly award ceremonies that we always tried to make fun and include a band and some, some good food and, and some good laughter. And then of course we also had Feedback Fridays uh, another way to engage on a very uh, direct and personal level with some folks uh, who had some pretty important questions to ask us. But I think one of the things we both uh, liked a lot were our commander's calls. And we had a lot of fun planning those, a lot of hard work uh, by the staff. So thank you to the staff that helped us uh, put those events together especially. Um, but I think that those were the things that we, you and I went about um, doing as a team. And then they kind of grew from there. And um, when I think about the importance of that, I kind of I think about the Band of Brothers, the miniseries. And that movie, or that, that show, is one of my very favorite um, because of what it shows about, about a unit that comes together um, as one with uh, all over the country um, from very, very diverse backgrounds, yet they fight as one team. And uh, they, they are committed to the mission and they're committed, most importantly, to each other. So I got a question for you. Yes. So when you look back over the last two years, do you have a favorite uh, event or a favorite initiative that we pursued that helped us connect with others? Uh, I honestly, I love them all. The commanders' calls are, are phenomenal. They're they're a, they're a major production and a major event. Uh, but uh, I think the annual awards, our annual awards ceremony with a sports theme, which was a, just a great idea from a great team, uh, it was certainly not ours. Uh, but to allow them and kind of empower them to put something together that's non-traditional. Uh, and it was a blast. We had a great time uh, the first year and this uh, this last year it was even bigger and better uh, and hopefully that continues on. Uh, but yeah, that's that's a great example of connectedness. And and, and back to your comment about uh, Band of Brothers and you think about the, the connectedness with that team and the history of that and the amount of success that they had facing just massive odds and, and some of the huge uh, trials and tribulations that they went through. Um, I would say that over the last two years, certainly no comparison to Band of Brothers from that extent, but we've been through some trials and tribulations. Uh, we've had some emergencies that we've had to face and, and some, uh, some of our own kind of major challenges. Uh, so I, I just wanted to kind of pile on to that thought of connectedness and what that brings to the team and to the fight when the time comes to actually have to face those, those huge odds, those austere emergency situations. That's awesome, Chief. Yes, ma'am. So you ready to head over to Lackland? Let's go to Lackland. All right. So here we are at JBSA Lackland on the pedestrian bridge to the gateway of the Air Force. And in our, on our thank you tour, uh, we just left Fort Sam Houston. We talked about connectivity uh, and the way that we wanted to shape the culture of our wing. Uh, and the way that uh, through that culture our team has been able to rise to any challenge and we've had quite a few challenges We've had some crises and different emergencies uh, and our team has done phenomenally But uh, now at the end looking back I wanted to ask the boss if uh, when you found out you're gonna be a commander here Could you ever imagined all of the challenges that you would face when we got to Joint Base San Antonio? No, I do not have that good of imagination. I could never have predicted it um, But I'll tell you as we've gone by and said goodbye to a lot of folks that's a common theme that comes up and they'll say, wow, your team, you guys face an unprecedented number of challenges and crises and emergencies. Um, how did you all do it? And looking back, it kind of, the pieces fall together, especially considering where we are today. But it started out with uh, kind of the first thing was that summer, we had some dorm challenges with uh, some pipes breaking in the, in the dorms over at Fort Sam and then also here at Lackland. 
So we kind of got our, our feet wet there. And then we supported the border operations, so Army North in the lead, and we're supporting thousands of soldiers that are coming through JBSA uh, on their way down south. And then not too long after that, we were faced with the military housing crisis and can't thank our team enough, our engineers, um, the leadership that, that helped really communicate with the families here. Uh, that's incredible, our PA team, um, folks, folks just went above and beyond uh, to get us to where we are today. We didn't get much of a break though after that, so we were hit with the mold crisis. And uh, we felt it everywhere across JBSA, but especially here at Lapland, uh, with the vast number of dorms here. And you and I spent a couple hundred hours in these dorms over here, and uh, I can't thank you enough for that. Um, but especially to the team, our team that responded, and with each crisis we got stronger. And that led us to you know, what we're facing today, which is COVID-19. Well, we couldn't predict it. Uh, the relationships that we built with our mission partners here at Lackland, with our medical community at BAMC, as well as with Recall, the 37th Training Wing, Med COE, and then of course our incredible team and what they did uh, to get us through some pretty dicey times, uh, to include the one that we're in right now. So if I could flip the script though and ask you, as you look back on the year, you know, what's the emergency or challenge that stands out to you the most? So I mean, the, our, our dorm mold crisis is really kind of near and dear to my heart, uh, being an enlisted member um, and, and being the command chief, that's kind of right in my wheelhouse. Uh, so the way that our entire team responded to that uh, I, it is just phenomenal. Uh, but honestly, I think uh, right now with COVID, and maybe it's because it's so recent, um, COVID is probably the one that I'm most proud of, uh, just because of the response, but more so than just the response, uh, as we're responding, and in some cases kind of creating the playbook for the rest of the Air Force and creating the playbook for the DOD, really. Uh, we're also building kind of future operation plans uh, to, to kind of be prepared to live with this for 12 to 18 months. Uh, so that's always exciting. Anytime you can be a part of uh, planning for the future strategically, uh, that's kind of right in line with what we do. Uh, so, so speaking of future planning and kind of future operations, uh, that takes us to some future uh, discussions that we're going to have at Randolph. So let's get there. So here we are at JBSA Randolph, the final stop on our thank you tour. We're in front of the iconic Taj, which as you know, we love to light up uh, on various occasions throughout the year. Uh, we talked already about uh, connectedness and how that was the culture that we wanted to build across our wing. Uh, and quite honestly, that set us up for amazing success when we had the various crises and emergencies that we had to deal with uh, over the last year. Uh, and so then we started talking a little bit about the future, and that's, that's why we're here at Randolph. Uh, Randolph will be, will be the site of some pretty major future initiatives for uh, Air Education and Training Command. Uh, and I'm speaking of Pilot Training Next and UPT 2.5 uh, and uh, the T7 Bed Down. Uh, so when we're talking about future and future operations, uh, in my mind I know that our team, the team that we leave, will excel and they will conquer those, those, uh, those future obstacles just like they did for the last two years. Um, that being said, I'm, I'm curious as we look back, um, what's kind of your proudest moment over the last two years? Gee, you're setting me up here. One moment I have to choose from millions of moments. Um, it's, it's impossible to choose just one. And so I'm just going to say that my proudest, um, my proudest feeling, or the, the thing I'm most proud about with this command, are the people and the people in the 502nd Air Base Wing and uh, what they have brought to this organization and what they brought to this entire community is beyond words. And we have men and women who have dedicated their lives uh, in our nation's defense. They've spent their entire adult lives uh, serving this community, some for 10, 20, 30, 40. We talked about 50 years. And it goes without saying, we face the tough challenges, but we face them together as one team, one mission. And I'm confident that we're gonna be able to face all those future challenges that you described. Um, and it goes from our security forces group stationed right here at Randolph. Um, we also have uh, great kudos going out to our force support group, which is uh, headquartered at Fort Sam. Our installation support group over at Lackland. And then of course, our civil engineering group, which is stationed at Fort Sam, but it is all over uh, this tremendous uh, location of Joint Base San Antonio. But I would remiss if I didn't also give a shout out to our wing staff agencies from our JAG Corps and Chaplain Corps and Public Affairs and IP and Sapper and you name it. Um, they are covering, they are covering down on our six and they have got our backs and they have lifted all of us up with their expertise. 
So with that, I have I want to flip the script again on you. Okay. And you are about ready to end um, 30 years of I service am. to yes, our country. Man. You are retiring in a couple of months. And I wanted to ask you, as you reflect back on your 30-year career, what would you say or where would you where would you choose to focus as your proudest moment? Oh, that's, um, yeah, so, so that's huge. Um, and, and I'm probably going to do the same thing that you did. So, uh, no, I, I um, so I, I actually met I actually met my wife while in the military. So when I think back of proudest moment, uh, you know, 22 years ago, uh, marrying a phenomenal woman and raising a great family. So that's that's obviously my proudest moment. That said, on the professional side of the house, uh, to be quite honest, and this isn't uh, shameless pandering to the men and women of the 502nd Air Base Wing, but but really uh, this assignment, uh, finishing my career as a command chief for the 502nd Air Base Wing in Joint Base San Antonio, uh, has really been the highlight. And uh, you know all the trials and tribulations that we've been through, and the blood, sweat, tears, hours that we've put in. Uh, but quite honestly, this is probably the most rewarding thing I've ever done uh, as being a part of the military. So um, I, I can't do anything but thank those who have kind of uh, allowed me to be on this ride with them. So, uh, so that that's got to be my proudest moment is is here, right here. here this right now, this man. We are lucky, so lucky to have served with you here in Joint Base San Antonio and having you end your career here with all of us and begin another career. And just remember, you know, beginnings are scary, endings are kind of sad, and it's the middle that really counts the most. Yes, and just remember that as you start your next your next new beginning. Right but I gotta say, I love you, Chief, and I wouldn't have wanted to do this with anybody else. Yes, ma'am, love you too. Thank you, sir. And love you guys, 502nd Air Base Wing, thank you. Told you you could